This week, Drew and I interview Brenda Scott, Texas brand ambassador, mother of five, president of Wildfire Ladies Cigar Society, and distinguished ruffian scout for the Texas chapter. Our topic, women in cigar culture, opinion and events, and Story Geeks picks up a new sponsor. And of course, Drew and I have some sticks of the week. It all starts right here on episode 306 of Stogie Geeks. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Hosempa, aka Joe Hollywood, is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. And a Vintage Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Confidence. Confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air, thinking you're better than anyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone in the first place. That commercial always fires me up. Anyway, it is episode 306 of Stogie Geeks. I am here in G-Unit Studios in Warwick, Rhode Island. I am your host, Joe Hozempa. Super awesome to be here for episode 306. If you want to follow along, you go to stogiegeeks.com slash 306. You can catch all the show notes and links. And this week, Drew and I interview Brenda Scott. Super excited to hear about the distinguished ruffians but i'll read her bio first brenda is the is a texas brand ambassador mother of five president of the wildfire ladies cigar society distinguished ruffians for the texas chapter and we are going to talk about women in cigars and how it relates to the retail element of it as well I want to get uh, Brenda's take on um, her take on the industry, not only as a brand ambassador, and we'll get into the brand uh, there. Stogie Geeks listeners should be familiar with the brand that she represents, and we're going to talk about the roles of a brand ambassador. Surprise, a lot of places don't really have a lot of ambassadors here in the Northeast. They used to, uh, so we're going to take uh, her temperature and find out what it's like down in Texas. Maybe there's more brand ambassadors, because I think not only does a brand need a rep, but they also need... Uh, cheerleaders um, on the retail side uh, and also people who are fans of the brand because that builds top of mind awareness but hey what do I know anyway I'm your host Joe Hosempa I am here in GUNIT Studios we have live via Zoom or Skype I have no clue yet Uh, it's Drew oh Zoom we have live via Zoom we have Drew who's down in Bedford (laughs) Texas Drew how's it going Very well. It's uh, very nice here in Texas right now. We're getting some weather from this uh, storm down south, so the guys down there are getting eight inches of rain from what we hear. Uh, but otherwise, Brenda and I have been hanging out the last week and uh, attending a couple of events for uh, cigars for the Warriors. Uh, we went to two uh, shops uh, this past weekend and it was a blast. Got to meet a lot of people, including Eric Espinoza. And got to hang out down at Lake Bird uh, Cigars. Uh, it was just a very nice event. Um, it, it's near and dear to my heart because both of my my dad and my father in law they both served in the service. That's awesome. Uh, in the armed services. Yeah, uh, I've had. We're gonna we'll talk a little bit about that too. The Cigars for Warriors chapter sure, sure, sure. as as a prequel uh, there. I've had the opportunity to interview them in my uh, radio tenure before here on Stogie Geek. Super awesome organization. Uh, wonder how the FDA is going to fucking try to screw that up too. But anyway, moving on. Right. Keeping it positive, right? Keeping it positive. My father is retired <laughs> Navy and all of that stuff. But I want to welcome Brenda to the show. Brenda, how are you? Thank you. I'm great. Thank you. I, 
Uh, can we go right to distinguished ruffian scout of the Texas chapter? Sure. I I'm so intrigued. Like like what is the distinguished ruffian scout for the Texas chapter? Please tell me. So a scout is someone who, um, like I organized the event that we had last weekend okay. and that was two events in two days. Um, so help organize events and help, um, also in membership, you know, get okay. other people members and spread the word. It's really more about spreading the word, um, of distinguished ruffians and getting people to, uh, come want to come join us. What's, what's the mission? mission yeah like like um, is 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 that for the cigar industry the distinguished ruffians distinguished ruffian is just for anybody you okay, know gotcha. to join they're distinguished and they're also ruffians too so it brings people together from all walks of life we have chapters all over the world not really? just in the united states i mean we we have chapters everywhere all, all over the world so it's a lot of social media, a lot of Instagram mm -hmm. um, posting of cigars um, and the patches. Everybody posts pictures of their patches and call people out and so forth. That we work a lot with cigars for warriors as well. That's awesome. That, 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 that's actually a great mm -hmm. tie-in. Um, the, the cigars for warriors is a uh, a, a very interesting organization. Um, having had family that was deployed. And hearing stories, um, if they're able to talk about it and whatnot, like, you know, it's not like they can just hop in a car and go to a cigar shop and uh, enjoy while, you know, the in, enjoy the same freedoms that we have here. Um, there. Right. And so now when we ship them cigars, it's not only a little piece of home. But just the um, very act of lighting up a cigar and gives them a little bit of peace, uh, hopefully mind, body, spirit peace for them to, uh, you know, either clear their head or get themselves together for the task at hand. Uh, I think it's a, it's a super cool organization. Well, from what I hear, it's the number one requested item. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yep, the number one requested item is cigars. Yep, uh, cigars and probably socks. You know what I mean? And 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 there you <laughs> go. You know for sure. You know, for, you know, because especially if you're doing a lot of walking or you're 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 in situations that you don't have the lu the luxury to call time out. Um, you know, you you definitely right. wanna wanna be able to uh, you know, uh, at, at least kind of feel feel comfortable and and stuff like that. So yeah, I've actually heard that 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 is the most. That is the most requested items because those MREs is just so damn tasty for sure. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, they're, they're, they're good. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, I'm going to take the liberty to look up more on the distinguished uh, ruffians because I, I really think that, you know, when organizations come together and support another organization, it really acts as a, ca a, a catalyst for sure. Um, there. So, Definitely. so what do you do on the retail side to, to help out the retailers? So if you were to represent that group and go into the retail side, you would put the actual event together for them? For a retail, now for our brand or you mean for Distinguished Ruffian? What either, do you mean? Either or, either or. Like, like what, take me through your process of starting an event and take the Stogie Geeks listener through that. Well, there's different ones that I do. English Ruffian, um, I brought in some cigar companies um, to help out with the event. So uh, we did a PDR on, at Underground on Friday. Mm. And then last Saturday, we had Eric Espinosa. Uh, he flew in from Miami. Yep. Uh, cause he's a very good friend of mine. And he is uh, very involved with Distinguished Ruffian mm -hmm. and also with Cigars for Warriors. So um, he came out and you know, we just did some cigar specials. Um, things like that, but I also help uh, Kevin with Rockefeller, mm -hmm. so I help him plan events. And when he comes to Texas, um, which you know stores he's going to go around to and, and events, he's done stuff with Wildfire with me before. Yep. Um, he's been a sponsor and and helped out and made some donations for that as well. That's awesome. If you're really good yeah. friends with Eric Espinosa, tell him to get his rep to put his stuff in more cigar shops here in Rhode Island. 
because he's like in two and I don't know if it's a I northeast I don't know if it's a north and, and and from my perspective I travel to the forest part in Rhode Island it's one town over from Connecticut and I know Rhode Island's only 45 minutes long uh -huh. but but having gr grown up here we don't like to be in the car for, for more than 10 minutes right so 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 you know it, it's, it's, it's it's like I make a pilgrimage right I drive a half hour to this cigar shop and whatnot and uh, right. I'm a super fan of the brand uh espinoza um, i'm i'm really getting into this stuff again uh there and uh you know definitely uh tell him that i was asking for him and uh if he wants to I will. And, I'll if tell he, him. and if he wants to come on the show he certainly has a open mic for sure love to catch up with him i know he's oh, yeah. he, he hasn't been on since episode 100 something or other so yeah so it's it's been oh, quite wow. a while yeah it's about time then yeah it's about time to catch up and and, and and see what they've been up to and 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 talk a little business strategy for sure so yeah if you could yeah. relay, if you could so, relay uh, the message that would be awesome that would be super cool you know oh yeah we have his ear definitely what i wanted to add was that i've actually this is one of the first events that i've been to that was kind of put together like this. Uh, and I'll tell you, as a first time attendee, um, what I got for this was just to see the camaraderie, the camaraderie of the, of, uh, the Warriors operation, uh, Scarf of Warriors operation, Eric Espinosa. Uh, to see his product, you know, uh, you know, he was out there just kind of uh, engaging with all the uh, attendees, uh, whether they were the lounges regulars or new attendees or mm -hmm. just someone like myself who was a first time attendee there. And I thought it was kind of cool. Cause he, I mean, he was interacting with everybody. The guys from uh, Wards and scars were interacting. And what you take away from this, uh, from that situation was that, uh, everybody comes together. Uh, they, 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 they all have similarities in life. I have a loved one who's serving the armed forces or, someone who's in a different part of the United States and they, they talked about their cigar uh, experiences with his brand, other brands. It was pretty cool to see that, that, you know, even though he was the featured uh, cigar brand there for the, for this event, uh, but other people were just, you could just hear the conversations going on and they were just talking about all the different. We uh, had groups from all over. Yeah. They all were talking over the about groups from Ireland, groups from uh, the UK, uh, you know, the far uh, Northwest United States. I mean, it was just very interesting to hear these conversations go on simultaneously in their little groups. And then they all come together and just kind of have a camaraderie, uh, mm. uh, you know, and, and discussion. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Even, even, even outside of the cigar world, you know, if, if I'm walking to the PO box with my son and, and you know you can always you know with the veterans got his hat on or or any time I always thank them for their service or if anyone here in the industry uh, mentions that they've served and whatnot you know it, it just there's a certain line of respect uh, for sure and there is a bond there I mean there there is certainly a bond there that goes well beyond like my father was a uh, retired uh, uh, Navy chief right and uh, he had passed mm -hmm. he, uh, he had passed in 2015. And we still talk to his close knit group of friends from when I was little and they were single and my dad was married and, 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 and his friends and they're geographically one's in Virginia, one's in uh, uh, Marlboro, Mass. N another one is down just south of Virginia. So what's the state after Virginia? North Carolina? Is that North Carolina? Is that right? North Carolina. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. right. It's been a while since I was in a geography yeah. class, right? So yeah, so 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 North Carolina and it's like and it's like whenever they're in town, you know, my mom texts me and my brother and we and we're like, Oh, so and so's in town and we always like you really drop what you're doing really and and just go and visit them and 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 it's just bonds for life like they've they've been to my high school graduation they've been to my college graduation they've been to my brother's high school and college graduation me and my brother are 10 years apart he's 10 years younger and you know they've been to my brother's uh, po uh, uh police academy graduate so like they've been to stuff for years and years and years and they're, they're so close and and that's just my immediate family, let alone, you know, some of the right. other stories that, that you would hear. And, and, and you have a common bond because ultimately the, the family does pay the price for um, uh, a loved one serving in the military, for sure. You know, absolutely. It's, it's, right. it's, 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 a, Definitely. it's a cause near and dear to my heart, for sure. 
uh, you know, I, I've, I've even went as far here in the Providence Metro to launch another radio show called the Veterans Digest. And, uh, you know, it, 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 it was on talk radio and, and it did well for a while. But, you know, then other veterans groups wanted to to kind of jump in and, and they took it in another direction. But, yeah, it's, it's a super cool cla clause. Nice. And, and, and um, uh, thank you for, for doing that and, and bringing those people together because I do think it's important for All them right. to have a not only an appreciation uh, event for them, right, or, or a, 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 sense of, a sense of appreciation, like deep appreciation for what they're doing and sometimes the tasks are not right. great and sometimes the tasks cause a lot of sacrifice not only for themselves but for the family uh for us to celebrate what we do here on our everyday life so um hats out to any veterans any stogie geeks veterans out there who have served or your loved ones uh it's certainly uh very close uh there too i know drew's working on getting uh cigars for warriors uh, on the, on the show here again, and and uh, looking l looking forward yeah. looking forward to to, to yeah. that uh, there. Uh, I've actually I'm on my side uh, uh, have a bunch of uh, veteran fans of the show, and I might do an APB and have them here in studio and kind of do and kind of do a lineup yeah. and share some stories. And we're gonna have to carve out some time and do our own. I don't want to say like our own event, right. but our, our, our own online appreciative. Uh, event for sure so uh brenda exactly. hats off for, exactly. for doing that uh definitely no problem you so I got a oh you have a question oh go for it yeah i have a question for brenda so i wanted to ask you oh that was uh talking about more of how how did you get into the cigar culture what what got you into this uh how did you become a brand ambassador i mean i don't know if you can share some light on that and for other uh listeners in our audience who might be interested in that like how did how did that come about i mean well and and i found it it's a common story too for women men got us cigars you know somebody that i was dating or whatever said here try this and stuff with like a chocolate favored cigar but quickly went on to two more so um i really prefer more of a full body um, cigar, maybe medium to full body, but I just really enjoy the whole cigar culture and that relaxation time it get and the connections and networking with people everywhere. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm passionate about it, I like to learn about it. So the best way to learn about it is start getting involved um, with different groups. If you choose to, you know, it's not for everybody. Um, but then, you know, I meet people along the way, cigar owners, um, brands, things like that. And, um, Kevin and I just became really good friends and I help him out with whatever he just, and I help, uh, Eric Espinosa out a lot as well. Um, but that's just why I got involved in it. So I could learn more about it. I like to learn. So I'm industry and consumer. Awesome. Yeah. They didn't make you fill out any, <laughs> any any formal paperwork. When I became a brand ambassador a long time ago in a galaxy far away, um, the rep was like, oh, you're going to sign this this thing. I mean, it was a little bit more corporate than Espinosa. I know it's corporate, but you know what I mean. It was a little, you know, and also right. it was probably social media wasn't a big presence as it is now uh, for sure uh, at, at, at that time. And, and they would send us sticks and we would go out. And we would um, kind of uh, like really like like educate our sphere groups, right? Our our peer groups or mm -hmm. sphere groups, and educate them about the blend and talk to them and say, yeah, well, they send me, and they even went as far as sent me like sheets. Like it was it was it was pretty rowdy, you know what I mean? And then you know yeah. they they wanted to know yeah. like anytime I did an event for any type of nonprofit or anything like that, they wanted to be the cigar, and and it was it was super cool, you know, it was it was it was super cool, and and I think that uh you know from a retail side i really think that the you know br brand ambassadors i mean everyone sure on social media they can be a brand ambassador i get that but i mean like true brand amb ambassadors right. who have access to um set up events or access to the uh sticks and what's up and coming and whatnot i i, I think a lot of the 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 smaller uh, type cigar companies would do well uh, for that um, for sure 
and mm-hmm. and um and also some of those classic facings can get people back involved because you know as consumers the market's flooded right let's face it we walk into our particular cigar shop or, right. or if we go online i mean we have we can we have the the pick of the litter right and if you're not buying for your whole week chances are you're going to frequent that cigar shop two three times a week even if it's once a week you're going to buy your two sticks now think about that if you walk into a, to to a retail side and they have 200 facings right and you're going to choose two sticks like what's it going to be right right and there are a lot of factors that play into that right the humidor worker saying you know if, if, if someone wants this stick and they're out or they don't carry it you know it, it's up for them to turn them into a happier customer and kind of educate them and i've i've felt in my experience over the past eight eight years or so that has gone down you know like the way they're truly going to the to, to the retailer and doing that. Now, there are some shops that do it very, very well, and there are some shops that actually do it poorly, but I think that, um, at least here in the Northeast, right. I, I hardly ever hear from, from, from brand ambassadors. Are there other versions of you? Is, is, is that more relevant in your culture down there over in Texas? A little bit. Um, I... I agree, though. I, w- I would like to see more, you know, in person brand ambassadors. Really, mostly it's social media. Right. Um, and, you know, it's free advertisement. And it's the, the word that has come up lately is influencer. Yeah. yeah. So that that's that's along the line of brand ambassador, more of, a, of an influencer through social media. Mm-hmm. As far as, you know, lately in this day and age, that's, that seems like what it has evolved into. So. But you've got to you've got to do it right. You've got to do the little at symbols, you know, the company, the brand, the rep, the shop, all that. If you just do hashtags, that doesn't really do anything. Hashtags really aren't as you know um, influencing yeah. as putting the actual at symbol and then whoever you're trying to yeah. trying to attract the attention to. So yeah, I'll, um, I'll be I'll, you have to I'll be honest for hashtags. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. If if uh, I have friends uh, who post, I'm making it up, right? Eight hashtags, right? You know, BOTL, yeah. blah blah blah, and I'm wicked cool, and that's and, so general. And, though. And, and, but but but, yeah. but 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 here's my point, right? As a consumer, I'm scrolling up or down, depending mm-hmm. on which app I'm using, right? I'm like, I'm not reading all your hashtags. Right. Like, I saw your picture. If I like the stick, I'm gonna click. Boom. Yeah, I like it. Cool. If not, adios. And and. You know, uh, some of them, some, some, some influencers go overboard on that stuff. Uh, some, some don't. You know, um, I guess it depends on on personality uh, there. But I'm, you know, the, like true ambassadors. Like I remember a time uh, pre social media where you know we we had like like fans of the brand, right? And a classic case, a classic case of that. It's top of mind awareness for me, right? Yesterday, uh, the Humidor Cigar Shop had a Kristoff event, right? They were launching the JT series. Now, now JT is our buddy Jared. Like, we've known Jared forever pre Kristoff, right? And here's the point. When Jared was at a regular event for Kristoff and Glenn Case was there a long time ago, uh, Glenn Case had some trivia questions and he had some, some really super cool swag, right? Here's, here's the point of my conversation. If you got the trivia question right, you got like a, a really like unique 685 Woodlawn, which was like named after like Glenn Case's address, right? And, 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 and those right. at the time were not in regular production. They, they were event sticks, etc. So you got some super cool swag. And Jared actually got, and I'm making it up, right? Six questions right out of the 10, right? And so Glenn kind of pulled them aside and they were talking. And like Jared was such a brand ambassador for Kristoff. And then what happened was... You know, Glenn was talking about considering bringing an inside rep for Kristoff. And he was like, you know, give me a year, blah, blah, blah. I got to work out some stuff. And then it's led to that. And now he's like regional vice president or whatever his title is in charge of all the sales reps. And he's traveling all around the U.S. and the world to represent Kristoff Cigars. And that's, that's what a brand ambassador 
potential had that potential many years ago to really be close to the company to really be the boots on the ground for the company um and and to really focus yeah. on that and um i don't know why i mean i i do know some of the legal reasons why right you know you can't pass out cigars and to promote a brand right. uh That's some re- lot. yep mm-hmm. some some retail version some retailers might not like it because that person who's going to come and buy two if you give them one now he buys one and you're taking out there and 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 you know i have mixed feelings about that subject too and definitely not to go off on a rant but you know it, it, it's like it's like i don't know like like a, a a true ambassador can really, really help a company build that top of mind awareness. And um, if the fact that you're doing it around cause marketing, right? You know, the cigars for warriors or any other t- type of things. It's 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 just a great move. And 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 I I think that um, you know more companies should definitely re- reach out and and do that more. You know, at least here in the northeast, right. it's, it's, I, yeah. I I I know one. Like, I mean, how many cigar companies are there out there? I know one brand ambassador, and he's right. ter- he's terrible. <laughs> you know, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are you gonna do, right? What are you gonna do? Um, well, it's interesting. Yeah, what? it's it's interesting as well. But um, the, like, so you know, when I was listening to some of the IPCPR this past IPCPR interviews uh, with some of the cigar manufacturers, you know, some of them were like, "Yeah, we're gonna go away from the brand ambassador and." And 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 do an influencer uh, more reach out with people who are influencing through the social media platform. But I also, for me, it's like okay. So if I'm walking into this hobby, you know, and that's a word that's used around in our in our industry mm-hmm. when people are getting into the hobby, uh, you know, it's important to have that person out there to 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 help with questions, get a different uh aspect of the cigar uh or the cigar industry or the cigar culture and things of that nature and it's kind of it's kind of cool to have all that information out there uh and then you can just kind of depict you know what that individual uh is is acquiring in knowledge Mm -hmm. Uh, also for me i you know i i've talked with a lot of people recently uh in the industry and and they were like, yeah, if I can just find someone, uh, you know, to do, you know, to do this uh, and, and help us grow, uh, you know, that'd be great. I'm like, well, there's people out there that smoke cigars right. who through their own, through their own uh, uh, venue have earned, you know, uh, just like myself. I mean, I 10 years ago or a decade, over a decade when I started smoking cigars, I didn't. I didn't ever envision myself becoming a brand ambassador, but I was just talking to Brendan this morning. I said, you know what? I think I, I think I like to go down that road a little bit and just see what that's like. So I can get that experience as well. Yeah. Uh, but then also further educate, you know, our listeners, uh, further educate myself most of all, and then help other people who want to come into this uh, culture, understand it a lot better because there's still that little stigma out there. Like, well, if I go into the cigar lounge to just walk in and buy a cigar and walk out, am I invited in to sit in their lounge and enjoy the stick? And as I tell a lot of customers that I meet here at Prestige that haven't been here, um, you know, I, I tell them, yeah, come on in, you know, come in and sit down, take an hour, 45 minutes, whatever time you have, and and see what it's like. Right. And so with the ambassadors, uh, customer relations at our front um, POS you know, when the sales are being uh, made, uh, you know, I know Naomi makes it a, you know, makes it a point to allow them to come by, not only get out, but hey, go ahead and sit down, <laughs> grab a beverage out of the refrigerator. Uh, we're a beer, but most of the time we have some waters and soft uh, soft drinks and things of that nature that they can enjoy water, yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> different waters. But it just allows them to really understand what this is about. Um, and that's one thing that intrigued me with Brenda when I was when we were talking. Uh, I wanted to find out, you know, how does how does that one how do women perceive that at this point? You know, how mm. how how is it? How, do they feel intimidated? Are they? I, I've seen some women come in with their husbands. Uh, I know my wife. So she walks in, she'll sit in here for about thirty minutes, and she's like, "Okay, I got to go outside." <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> and, 
you know, but, but even my wife now, she's like, Hey, that's pretty cool. You know, it's kind of to sit there. Um, when I brought her in here, our, 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 uh, our, uh, cigar lounge members, you know, they spoke with her. I mean, it was just kind of nice to hear her perspective at home one right. evening when she, Oh, that's pretty cool. She goes, I get your, I get your hobby. I get why you like to go to the lounge and sit there and have a cigar. She goes, it, 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 it took away that curiosity it's just like what they're really talking about right right, you know, right 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 what's, right what's going on yeah so yeah it, it, it totally um, does yeah and, so and i think it's great that um i know next door as well as some other shops here in the northeast they have ladies night i think it's super cool um there is a growing presence of ladies i think it adds to the diversity of the culture uh, I also think it expands the mm-hmm. audience, and I also think it keeps the vendors on their toes as well, right? Because, 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 like Brenda said, you can't assume right. you can't assume that all the ladies are gonna like mild or some of the the kind yes. of coffee flavor, all the flavors. You know, they they, they can. I I know some women who have some pretty rowdy po- uh, palates that are stronger than uh, some of my friends. Yeah. You know what I mean? And 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 I also think it keeps the yeah. manufacturers on their toes to open up that um that flavor profile for when they're trying to create a flavor profile to appeal to both men and women and i think it's super cool that more women are getting involved uh there and then the final takeaway i would I, and, until we switch topics about the wildfire group um you know uh, for the companies out there that say you know we're gonna go the influencer route and all that stuff who says you only have to right. do one, right? It's like it's like it's like mm-hmm. I go through this every day. I go through this every day in my day job, right? It's like, oh well, you know, we're doing this marketing now, and this is where we're focusing on. And I'm like, well, why can't you do both? You know what I mean? Like just uh, you know, just because you go on television doesn't mean that your phone's gonna ring, or just because you go on radio, or you know, you 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 have to have multiple touch points that reach your target Definitely, audience. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, regardless right. of yeah. industry, this is not a this is not a cigar industry talk. This is a business one on one talk. You know, you, you you need multiple touch right. points. Right. Now I know that that there are rules out there, and I'll get email, send it away, Joe H at Geeks dot com, saying I don't know the rules. You can't pass out cigars against the law or FDA. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, great, but you can be a, a brand ambassador uh, with your peers outside of a cigar shop. Have an event, sure. maybe for a nonprofit. Shit, do some community good and smoke a cigar and call it a day. You know what I mean? Like, it, 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 you, you just gotta be, you just gotta be creative, and 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 you gotta be part of whatever cause that 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 you want to do. And you know, I just, you know, I get that that all the time. You know what I mean? Oh, we don't want to advertise on Story Geeks. We're gonna go with Cigar Aficionado. Well, good luck with that. You know what I mean? Like freaking, you know, I'm, right. you know, <laughs> you know, happens all the time, and and you can do both. And, and 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 you can do both for sure, you know. Um, so Brenda, the Wildfire Ladies yes. Cigar Society, right? Take, give me a visual. Uh, give give me and the it's listeners. It's funny because a lot of the things that you've already <laughs> said ties into Wildfire. So okay. uh, Jennifer, uh, Jennifer is uh, the founder of and. It spun off from another cigar society we were in because it was mostly men and the women get kind of lost in that shuffle. And we were all single women. So it's not like we were wives being brought in, you know, by their husbands. <laughs> sure. We actually were real cigar smokers, right? Um, and whiskey, you know, scotch, stuff like that. But so we met on a different night of the week and it was her, her concept when she developed this was a place for women um, to be comfortable, to come to have cigars with other women in case that was an environment that worked better for them Mm -hmm. instead of being um, maybe intimidated um, going into a cigar shop with just a bunch of men. So the other, she, she had several things, points that she did this on, which is we move around to a different shop every month. So we support our local brick and mortar. We don't have just one shop to go to. We go to, we go to a different one every month. Mm-hmm. So, um, but every, any woman is welcome to join us at any level of their cigar journey that they're on, whether they're just starting or never smoked, or they've been smoking longer than I have. Um, you know, some of them are smoking for 20 years and come and join us. 
And then we've uh, evolved a little bit since uh, I've been doing it and I've added things like almost every month I have a cigar brand uh, come in. So it's kind of like a little mini ambassador in person there. Yep. Because I'm bringing a cigar brand in. Um, sometimes I have the owner. Sometimes I have the rep. And it it's an opportunity for those women to uh, talk and discuss cigars, especially that brand, if they want to learn more about it um, and talk to them in person and have that little intimate one-on-one time instead of at a big event, don't get that time to talk to someone um, in a more personal level, you know, that one-on-one time. So we bring that in. Um, They also get to visit all the shops. So that way they feel comfortable. They can go to those shops without me. They don't need the group to go back to that shop if they enjoy it. And I've had women come up to me and say, oh my God, I'm so glad we went to, you know, this shop because I realized it was by my work and I go in there now and I can sit down. I feel comfortable. I can sit down and have a cigar and go pick me one up and cut it and light it. And, you know, I feel comfortable doing that. Yeah. So yep. that's one of the things that has evolved out of that. So yeah, absolutely. Nice. It, it, it reminds me of a story in my business life. Uh, the local chamber of commerce that I'm a member of has a group it's called we bond it's like woman Uh entrepreneurial business on i don't know demand or something like that i'm butchering the name i've never been to a meeting right but (laughs) but 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 it's great no it's great because there are a lot of women entrepreneurs who you know uh they they either got laid off from a job or they were home and now they're out there starting a business and they're women entrepreneurs, and then they enter a chamber of commerce, and it's everybody in a suit except for me. But it's a bunch of men in a suit hanging out, you know, uh, you know, hanging out, drinking the two drink on a drink tickets, talking about business. And so when WeBond started, it was actually super cool because they had educational seminars about you know QuickBooks and different educational components, how to fill out mm-hmm. paperwork with the state and all that stuff. And now, like as a executive board member of that chamber, I can tell you that there are more women on the board than men. There are more women at the events than men uh, there. And probably, this is my estimate just from observation, right? But probably 70% of the activity of the chamber the catalyst is the woman, you know, going to the woman, the, the ribbon cuttings and, and, and reaching out to a new business and, and doing the daily delivery or, or any type of fundraiser and all of that stuff. And, and as a member of that organization, Chamber of Commerce, since I was 24, so 20 years now, right? I've seen that metamorphosis change and I think it's super cool. Definitely. Definitely. We have buying power. Yeah, of very course you do. High buying power. <laughs> and 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 not only do you have buying power, you 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 are making sure that the manufacturers are going to you you're going to create enough noise for them to pay attention to your palate and for them to just create hopefully better and newer products non FDA, right? Uh hopefully better in mm-hmm. in 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 newer products. For all of us to enjoy, you know what I mean. I can't wait for the for the first. I can't wait for the first person that we interview on Stogie Geeks, and says, you know, we, when we were rolling this blend, we were thinking of, you know, the or, or the first one to have the Coolion to admit we were thinking of women for this in this blend of Honduras, blah blah blah, or whatever. You know, it, we we think that, and the first one that does that. It, they they might be category king for for the for the for for for, for the woman audience. You know what I mean? You know, a little bit you of. You know hate. what? That that might be happening in the near future. It so should. It, it should. I will, uh, let it you should. know. It, it should. Like if I was in charge of a cigar company, you know, I, I would, I I would say, you know, the, some questions that I really got to get more in the habit of asking is asking the. If we're if we get the owner in, asking who, who's 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 their buying persona, 
You know what I mean? Who smokes a cigar? Is it meant for the the white collar, blue collar, everyone? What type of palate? You know, instead of saying, you know, it's a medium, it's a full, you know, if you can only smoke this, if you've been smoking for a year or higher, like, like what, what are you creating and why are you creating it? And please don't use the word passion. You know what I mean? Like, totally tell me you're doing it <laughs> for this audience and, 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 and get out there and put yourself out there and go for it. And and if 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 you have a project like that in the making, definitely keep Drew and I abreast of that. We'll we'll get you an interview and get that person in an interview for sure. Because I I really think that it's time to do that. You know, um, I promised yeah. uh, I promised some some woman I know in the industry to mention this. Uh, when they found out this morning that you were on, uh, I got three emails. All right, so they were like, "You you having a woman oh, yeah. on?" Yeah, they were go, "You you you having a woman on?" I was like, "Yeah." Um, ask them why, and this is not a question for you, right? This is a question for the industry, right? Right. Because the industry stays very close to this show, that's for sure. Um, you know, um, ask the woman who who emailed me. Ask them why, when there's a rep on the road, and there's a guy who's the humidor manager, and there's other three workers working, depending on their cadence. Ask them why they give cigars to the guys and not, and not the woman worker. And I says, that's a fascinating question. I said, who does that? She told me. I said, okay, I'm not going to say anything I promise, right? But it's like, it's like really, right. like, like they're a worker in there, and they're, they're your best line of defense if you want to get in the humidor because if you start to, 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 to you know, I don't want to say shun them, but not really treat them as an equal in the industry, you're really short, short changing yourself yeah. as a business. You know what I mean? For sure. Oh yeah. So I think yeah. it's great. It's, it's exactly. happened to me. I, I've been to it and, um, you know, the cigar rep or whatever at the, didn't speak to me, didn't ask me if I needed help, yeah. anything. So I, I have definitely seen that happen. I've had to assert myself and approach them. Yeah. Um, and ask. Yep. Yep. So I can totally relate yeah to the mission of the Wildfire Ladies Society. Because it reminds me of a program that I did in my radio days, right? Uh, I was a single guy, right, at the time. And in my radio days, I did a wine of the month club for the radio, <laughs> right? For the radio, and it was at a specific restaurant. Right. You know what I mean? And I got to sip wine with 50 women every month. You know what I mean? Because I was hey, because yeah. I was the host. And all That's that. great. You know what I mean? So so uh, I hats off to to the single ladies out there cre creating that and whatnot. You know, because I'm yeah. I'm just imagining. I'm not asking. And if you want to offer up any any type of information, you're more than welcome. But if you put guys in the room, single ladies, cigars and scotch, there has to be some matchmaking in there. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, well, they're not they're not all single yeah yeah, yeah, single. yeah i know i know e uh, either that have, or some uh, fist fights but we i do have it. a lot of yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we do have a, a, a fans you know guys that follow us and and they show up to our event and um you know we allow it they can come in it's just it's a public place so they can come and also bring the cigar brand in. It's kind of like an informal cut and light for them. Yep. So it's a win-win for everybody. It's on a Tuesday night. They get some extra business. Women get a chance to um, have some fellowship together, but the guys can come in and they can participate in the cut and light. Um, but what you were saying a minute ago about the cigar rep and and, and the women, it's things like um, when I bring the cigar brand in to our, our event, I'll tell them or the owner or whatever, whenever another woman walks in that's with my group, I'm like, Hey, you know, can you take her to the humidor and go show her your cigars? So I get, I, I try to bring everybody together and give them that opportunity. Here's, here's this woman just came into my event. You know, she doesn't know anything about your cigar. Would you like to take her to the humidor and show her what you got? Or you have a special tonight or, you know, whatever. So I try to, I try to get that interaction going. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. What's your take on, the industry in general not only as it applies to women but like in in general like like well what do you think uh, the future holds non-fda okay we're there because we're, i'm done i'm done yeah. talking about the fda because we're going to be talking about it by 2023 so you know 
I know. That's the thing, though. It's it's, it, it's changing. Yep. It's, there's just a lot of changes going on, and um uh, does have to do with that. But um it's just just a lot of changes. So yep. I hope everything um, continues on the way it is. Because the way that I came into this is that it is it crosses all boundaries. You know, it brings people together. Um, for a good time, you know, good conversation, or you just enjoy it by yourself. You know, mm. I, my best time is on my patio with coffee Yep. Uh, early in the morning or late at night, whatever. So, but I really would like to see how it, I was introduced to it, which is it encompasses everybody of all backgrounds, um, everything and brings people together um, for good reasons. Um, lots, like I said, lots of networking and connections and things like that. But that's what I would like to hope that it continues on that route that it all to me, what it's shown to me, it's always has been. Yeah, I, th- I think it, the, the networking and connections will, will stay the same. I think industry wide, we're going to see a lot of consolidation of brands. Yeah. You know, we're, we're just going to see a lot we're of consolidation seeing, brands. You know? <clears throat> yeah, we're seeing that almost. I'm going to say once a week, I always read about something on from Half Wheel or uh, Cigar Aficionado about being consolidated and things of that nature. And that's why I always I always forward uh, or share uh, that news on my Facebook page uh, Mm -hmm. at uh, uh, at Drew Galvin Prestige uh, on Facebook. But it's one of those things, again, for me as well, is that I want to keep everybody, our listeners on So Geeks everybody in general i have a lot of uh uh followers that are you know from all over the world are you know they they and they like that information coming out and being shared uh, so that they can understand what's going on in yeah. the industry live you know what's happening this week. and so uh you know i've made relationships with these larger you know with all these different uh platforms just 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 so that i can you know, for that out there and, and, and help that, and, you know, help our industry understand where we're going, mm-hmm. um, you know, and also working with our, our senators that are, are, that are in the fight or in the process of helping the cigar industry get, you know, s- separated from that uh, OTB product. Uh, but, uh, it, it's cool. Cause I'll tell you, uh, I was sharing with Brenda. I said it's nice to walk into my lounge, in our lounge here, and see a mix of women and men, and we're talking sports, we're talking whatever, and sharing stick, and they're wanting to know what we're smoking, you know, what we like about it, and just it's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Actually, they're wanting to know what I'm smoking. Yeah, they're wanting to, exactly. We oh. always the women here. What are you smoking? And it's, it's, I'm not asking y'all what you're smoking. I'm, y'all are asking me what I'm smoking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, we watch the fights almost every Saturday night. A lot of, a lot of time. We watch a lot of UFC fights. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I, and, and having the presence of women at events brings a certain, um, a certain, better appreciation of the industry and the openness of the industry for uh if if anyone has walked into a retail cigar shop male or female um there is that reluctance especially if they're not familiar with the culture and i can tell i can tell the story geek listener you know if you're the story geek listener who buys your sticks online and you haven't had a chance to go to a retail cigar shop and you know you, you're really missing out on friends that you'll meet for a lifetime, and and you're really missing out on some some great conversation, good or bad, right? <laughs> but it's, but it's great conversation, yeah. right? You know, I don't talk. <laughs> I personally don't talk politics, sex, religion, or Yankees, Red Sox, baseball. Like that's my, you know, that that that's my cigar shop boundary there. Like even yesterday when the Yankees clinched the division, uh, just FYI for you, story geeks, when the Yankees cl- uh, clinched the division, they were like, "Oh, your Yankees are gonna clinch." I was like, "Yeah." I was like, you know, but you know, they haven't had they've had a pitching problem for the past 19 years, and uh, you know, we'll probably get picked off by the first round anyway. And I kind of end it. 
because I know that yeah. if it's coming from a Red Sox fan, they always did a thing or, <laughs> or, or, or let's switch it right from sports, you know, politics, like, like, like it, 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 like, especially now with the political culture, I have never seen in my lifetime. So like the gap of the division of which side you're on doesn't matter. Pick one. I really don't care. Right. It's so bigger. Like there right. are some people who cannot stand current administration. And there's some people who can really stand current administration. Growing up as a kid, you know, or, or in college, there was a vast in between. You know what I mean? The vast in between where they would jump potty lines. And now it's like, it's like, it's, it's, it's really divided. And, and, you know, um, you know, and, and, and then it, that trickles into other things. And I've had people ask me, you know, oh, that blah, 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 I spoke again. I said, dude, I was like, I don't talk politics, sex, religion. No, come on, seriously. I'm like, no, I'm serious. Like, you know what I mean? You want, you want to talk about something else? And right. it's on a table. You don't want to talk about my family, and even that's on a table. But I'm just, I'm just not going down that path. And right. I, and I think you'll have a a, a, a a wicked good time, as we say here in the Northeast. You'll have a wicked good time at a cigar shop if you don't talk politics, sex, or religion. You know, so absolutely. Oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Most definitely. I know, I know with, I know with, uh, you know, our, like our clients here, we just kind of, you know, if the members are here, we we just have the the three rules. You know, not three rules, just guidelines. Yep. What not, what what to do, what not to do. <laughs> sure. Uh, because you know, we have a, we have people with strong opinions and very passionate, and I know that word is so overused. Yeah. And they, uh, and and it it, it it comes out and and you know, here in our lounge, anyways, it's funny because we all pick on each other like brothers and sisters. Yeah. So that, that's, yeah. Yep. That's definitely pretty cool. So, but otherwise. Is, you know, we, 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 yeah, we definitely do that. I know the UFC nights, it's, it's, it's pretty rowdy. I mean, not rowdy in here, but it, it's pretty cool because, I mean, it's interesting that even, and I'm not saying that I know my wife doesn't like watching UFC or boxing because she said it's too bloody, but, you know, everybody else that comes to the lounge here, uh, you know, they all know the fighters, they, they know their, their word, and, and everybody can, you know, you know, kind of take little jabs at each other. If you have a favorite, it's pretty cool. You know, to yeah. have that brother and sister uh, uh, camaraderie together. Yeah, so. it, it it really becomes extended family. It really exactly. like I, I I mean I cannot tell you how many times we're sitting around a cigar shop and somebody's like, oh man. We lost power, and I gotta move my generator. Or my, we lost power. My generator doesn't work, so I gotta go buy a new generator. And like people, like this one's a plumber, electric, whatever the kid. And we're like, boom, and we go and help them. Or oh man, I gotta move this big piece oh, of yeah. furniture. And 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 it's just so cool. It's like I remember, you know, like you know when I moved, it was like all my cigar buddies hanging out and. Smoking cigars, moving in. Right. You know what I mean. And my girl's like, "I ah, smells like cigars. The windows will be open. We got free labor. We're good. Keep going. <laughs> Keep them moving. You know what I mean. <laughs> Keep them moving. You know, because because we're because we're smoking cigars and then doing that there. So yeah, absolutely. And you're also a brand ambassador. Most definitely. And and Brenda, you're uh, before we wrap up this segment and get on to sticks of the week. Uh, I want to invite you if you want to stick right. around. If you want to stick around for the next segment, if you have time, Brenda, we're, uh, yeah. Drew and I are yeah, going to burn through some sticks of the week no pun intended we're going to burn through some sticks of the week that we've been smoking so if you want to stick around and if you want to think of a couple sticks that you want to describe you're more than welcome to join in if you want to chime in on our conversation okay. you're more than welcome to join in i'm just trying to get your brain going so you know Thank what's you. coming up yep i got gotcha. you um right and then you you are an official brand ambassador for rockefeller cigars um right over, over there so how are they doing down in texas because because here they, you know, here, you know, they do well if Kevin's in town. You know what I mean? And it's the same thing with other cigar companies. Like when, when, when you're, when, when, you know, and, and I think it's super cool that, you know, he's trying to potentially build something that's not revolved around him. You know what I mean? Which, which is a smart business move for sure, you know? But like even, <laughs> but it's, it's not a testament to, 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 to the smaller batch of cigars. Even with the classic facings, if that rep yeah. is not around, they're not building that top of mind awareness, regardless of social media or influencer marketing and stuff like uh, that. So, I, I agree. you know, so like, like he, he's in, I'm making it up probably uh, 
18, 20 shops out of the 38 here in Rhode Island. So he's, he's got good numbers here. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? It's just... Yeah, he does. They yeah. fly off the shelf when he's hanging around the shop. He can't clone himself. Yeah. So take us through uh, some of the efforts. And if there's anything you want to sneak out that's coming out new from Rockefeller for us, you're free to talk about that as well. Well, the, the new one was the Dominican Blue. So that's his cigar um, out of the DR. So that that's the one that the new one that we just introduced at the show. Um, but, you know, I do agree. And he's not the one where it's better when he's around. So he has he comes to Texas about five or six times a year. And we go around to all the different shops and have events and so forth. Um, you know, he's working on um, building up in other areas um, in Texas and the surrounding states. Uh, he does do very well on the, the Northeast. So I do understand that because that's where he, he is all the time. Right. right. Um, but we're, we're working on it. It's, mm -hmm. it's in the process so of trying to get um, more shops here in Texas and um, uh, Arkansas and so forth. So, right. um, but it is something that he is, that we are working on and he's going to be on here um, next month. Um, okay. So uh, probably a couple of times before the end of the year. Oh, cool. down, and we're going to go around and do some events here. That's cool. Um, available next door is the uh, Connecticut and uh, the gold series. And I've had both. I'm smoking the, the Rockefeller gold series. Now mm -hmm. absolutely enjoy this cigar. And now that you mentioned yep. that newest cigar, I had the opportunity. I had the opportunity to have that uh, when it when it was un unbanded, and 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 he was like, "Hey, what's up? Oh, hey, what's up, man?" And, and and he was like, he was like, "Oh, uh, it's coming one soon." Summer, one shot, one kill. He goes, he goes, "Oh, it's 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 it's, it's coming Steve. soon." Joe. You know what I mean? He goes, "Oh, it's it's coming soon," and uh, I I really think that that new one's gonna be a very big hit for him for sure. You know, definitely. I think it's 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 great, and it's great, and 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 I love to see improvements as well. Like when, and 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 it's not that the original product was was bad at all, but when it gets on another level with with that new cigar that that was released, I think it's super cool, and it and it shows a lot of uh, potential growth for the company. So, I wish you and Kevin the best of luck with that project for sure down Thank in Texas. You. you know, absolutely cool. Drew, you have any other questions for Brenda, or are we moving on to sticks? No, we're going to sticks. That was Jeff. He was just saying good afternoon from Texas. <laughs> he could have said good afternoon so, from Texas. Uh, anyway, when we come back, Drew and I are going to talk about the sticks of the week. Brenda's going to stick around. You don't want to miss the second segment. we 